Hi, I'm Tony from Handlebar Workshops. We're in the garage workshop, and today we're going to be working on building a speaker cabinet for that speaker from my earlier video. Uh, we're going to put it in a nice plywood cabinet. We're going to be using it as a base amplifier speaker, so the speaker cabinet will have an amplifier attached to it that won't be built in together, not as a combo, it's a separate cabinet. I'm going to be basing it off of the Mesa Boogie speaker cabinet for bases. It's a 1x15 cabinet. It's supported in such a way that it's lighter than other comparable cabinets and it's easy to build, which is one of the criteria that I was looking for there. We're going to be using the plywood here. We're going to be using the table saw here. We're going to be using the rubber table over here. I'm going to be making the sides and the top and bottom 19 and a quarter inches long. It's not quite what Mesa Boogie has as their specs, but it's close. And then I'm going to be cutting them to 18 and a quarter inches deep. So the first thing we've got to do is we've got to cut down two of these to 18 and a quarter inches wide, and then we can cut them up into 19 and a quarter inch long. Okay, we've got the plywood trimmed down to 18 and a quarter inch width. Now I'm going to get my cross cut sled out to cut it down to proper size. The first thing I want to do is I want to square the edges here because I've run into these where these haven't been square. They're cut at the store and they're sold in these 2 by 4 foot sheets, which is real nice when you've got a small car and you don't want to, you don't have the truck out with you that day. They fit in a car very nicely. It costs a slight bit more but the convenience is uh, what you're paying for at that point. But you gotta square off the edges just to be sure. You can kind of see here, this is much thinner at, at this end here than it is at this end, so it's a good thing I did that. short size, the eight and a quarter, 18 and a quarter inch size. I gotta put a dado in there so the size will sit in there nice and it'll help stiffen the box and it will look nice. So here's the basic structure of the cab here. Now we got to get the size for the front and the back. For the baffle that sits right here and for the back that's going to come here. Now, I just need to cut a circle for the big speaker and cut a circle for the tweeter.
glue is done drying on this cat on this box, but we're not quite done yet. With the big speaker moving in and out, moving all that air, it'll rattle and shake this box apart in no time. We gotta find some way to keep this box stiff and sturdy. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put 45 degree braces in each corner, and then we're gonna wrap the front baffle area and the rear panel area in with, a, with strips of plywood. That'll give me three benefits. One, it'll keep the sides from bowing in It'll keep them nice and sturdy, the front and back. It'll also give me a place to register the back of the baffle and the back of the panel. So I know I'm getting everything in square. And then it also gives me a way to make sure that I am sealing the cabinet completely so air can't get in and out. Just in case there's some gaps in my cuts. The backing with the strips of plywood will help prevent air from getting in and out other than with the speaker. So I'm gonna cut that plywood and glue it in. a few more things to do before we can mount the speaker and plug it in. First I have to round over the corners of the cabinet. That way no one gets any splinters when moving it around. We're going to use the router table here with the router bit with the I think it's a half inch round over bit. Have to put on the handles so it's easier to carry around. And I have to mount the jack plate. What I'm going to do there is cut a hole into the back panel and then the jack plate will mount on there probably near the top so that way it's easier to reach from the head sitting on top of the cabinet. One thing that went wrong with this is I was planning on putting the tweeter in there but there's just not enough room for the tweeter to fit in there it overhangs the sound hole and it's right up against there so no tweeter this build just the speaker.
it's working now. So I got a Behringer base head for about 150 bucks off Amazon. I think it's much better than the practice amp that originally came with it. And it's a much louder speaker. I've got uh, gain one set to about 11 o'clock. I've got the master set to about 1 o'clock. And here my volume is all the way up. So let's hear how it sounds. Sounds much better than it did on the practice amp. And yes, I am playing with a pick. I've got a boo-boo on my finger. So it makes it difficult, it hurts to play with that finger. So, and uh, yeah, I am a newbie, so I am not that good on the bass yet. So why don't we see what it sounds like with the practice amp that originally came in the package that I bought off Craigslist. All right, here we are with the original practice amp that came with the bass. We're gonna list it again, again with the pick. Turn the volume all the way up here. This bass setting, I've got volume uh, right about three o'clock. I've got a bit of a scooped going on. The presence is right about 11. Volume's all the way up on the bass. pickups on here I've got the volume on the bass turned all the way down and I can still hear it coming through the speaker I mean it is loud and clear coming just not as loud all right everyone thanks for watching if you like the video make sure you give a thumbs up and you click subscribe I'm off to take some bass lessons